at this point in the presentation, I want to hear from some of the young people who've been listening to this just to share what they thought about this question or maybe how they answered it. Um, I think I also had the same confusion with sugar, but then I knew that increased nicotine and flavors were both um, reasons to increase the addictiveness. And so that was why I chose all of the above. But I didn't realize that they had sugar in, in the vapes. I actually thought the same thing as everyone else. Um, I got it right just because I did what um, what everybody else did. I knew like two of them, so I chose all of the above. The answer for this question was all of the above. This was something that I mentioned in the previous slides. They manipulate the e-juice in so many ways to make it easier for someone to breathe in the aerosol. They may add sugars or flavors to make it attractive to young people. And they've been able to increase the amount of nicotine through that salt-based nicotine formula. If someone were to go on the Juul Labs website, you would see that they list some of these ingredients. So nicotine is found in the e-juice of a Juul pod. Benzoic acid, this is an important one because when we talk about salt-based nicotine, you need benzoic acid in order to create the salt-based nicotine. Glycerol and propylene glycol are really common in e-juices. So if someone were to look at a bottle of e-juice or a cartridge of e-juice, you would probably find these ingredients. And these are helping aerosolize the actual juice. Natural oils, extracts, and flavors are also listed. And then I have these question marks because I don't know what else is in the actual pod. And they don't mention anything about the chemicals that are aerosolized. So if you heat up chemicals, you're going to break down bonds and actually change chemicals. You'll form new ones. And this is something that the company does not mention or share with the public. So there was this lab that studied the Juul pods, all the different flavors, and looked at how many ingredients were in there. So they found 59 chemicals, which is a very different story from what the company is saying on their website. So the ones you see at the top in red are known for being the most toxic, are dangerous to the environment and to your health. So if someone is breathing in a lot of these chemicals, what we know from the laboratory is that these are not good for you. The ones you are seeing in orange are not as toxic as the ones in red, but are also harmful to your health. And the ones you're seeing in blue are described as irritants. So that can cause inflammation in your body. So if someone's breathing in a lot of these blue chemicals, your body will respond in a negative way. It's unfortunate that the company doesn't share this with us because I'm sure people would think twice about using this if they saw the e-juice ingredients. There was this article about how Harvard University had studied a contamination that had occurred in jewel pods. These jewel pods contain something called glucan, which is a microbial toxin. So there are small bacteria that produce this chemical, and this can cause a reaction in the lungs. Glucan is known for inflaming or causing inflammation of the lung airways. It would be damaging your lungs, basically. So I just want you to think about some of these chemicals because not all of them have been studied in detail. Even if someone is not directly breathing in or using an e-cigarette, the people around you are still being exposed to this thing called secondhand aerosol, which is very similar to secondhand smoke. So obviously someone would find nicotine or could be exposed to that. Also, they have found that secondhand aerosol contains heavy metals and heavy metals are cancerous to your body. So these, are not, these aren't something you wanna breathe in. Also, there are chemicals classified as ultrafine particles. So those are very tiny microscopic chemicals that can penetrate deep into your lungs. And your lungs aren't designed like your stomach where they can break down these chemicals. A lot of the times they just sit there and this residue, residue is being left behind and doing damage to your lungs. Also, there are other cancerous chemicals that they have identified in secondhand aerosol, along with something called VOCs, or volatile organic compounds. So anything that is an aerosol or a mixture of chemicals leaves behind a residue. 
when those chemicals are being left behind, that residue, your pets, our younger siblings, our toddlers could be exposed to that. So this is another layer to talking about aerosol. We have to think about these chemicals and how they're interacting with the environment. So not only does someone have to worry about the chemicals and what the damage it does directly to your lungs from using or walking by someone who's using, but you have to think about where someone is using and how those chemicals are going to be left behind and can potentially do damage to someone's health. Okay, I just want to quickly summarize everything that we went over in the last slides. It should be clear to you that these companies don't tell you everything about the harmful ingredients in the e-juice or the aerosol. So for this section, you'll want to answer questions seven through 10. I'm going to place the key takeaway slide up. That way you can use this just in case you need to recall any information that I covered.